Hi everyone, my name's Jen. I'm an author and a book reviewer. Last year in autumn, I filmed a My Top 10 Books for Autumn plus my TBR video. And you asked me if I would do one for winter, which I didn't get around to doing last year. So I thought I would do it this year because the weather has well and truly changed, at least here. And uh, it is chilly. So I thought it'd be fun to talk about books. So I love reading at this time of year. And as with the autumn video, because I'm gonna be talking about my top 10 books for winter, if you have been around for a while, you can probably make a guess as to some books you would expect to see on this list. So, you know, play bingo with yourself. And if you get a full house, let me know, or let me know how many you're able to guess anyway. So that's where I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start with my top 10 books for this time of year. And let me tell you, it was really hard to narrow it down to 10. So I may sneak some extra recommendations, just, you know, in there somewhere, but 10 is a nice round number to have. And then I'm gonna to talk to you about some books that caught my eye as I was going through my shelves thinking, oh, this may be a really good time of year to read these. And I'm sure I will get around to reading some of them, but probably not all of them, but they can serve as inspiration for you too. So let us begin with my top 10. And these are in no particular order at all. The first one is The Snow Collectors by Tina May Hall, which I read, I think at the beginning of this year. So I think I read it in January. And this is one of those books that isn't a favorite book of mine, but I think about it all the time and there's so much to love about it. Let me just read you the first couple of lines. I found the dead woman at the edge of my woods on the last day of January, King Month. 31 spikes on a crown of icicles. I had moved to a place where it snowed nearly all year round. And when it wasn't snowing, the landscape exploded into damp and flower. This is so atmospheric, it will make you feel chilly while you're under your cozy blanket. I recommended in my autumn video last year, Death in Her Hands by Atessa Moshveg, which I think would be a brilliant winter read as well. And this book really reminds me of that because it's about a dead body in the woods and someone trying to work out what may or may not have happened to this particular person. But this one is told in a really fragmented way and takes its inspiration from a lot of Victorian Gothic literature. The blurb says, Henna's investigation draws her into a Gothic landscape, as I said, of locked towers, dreamlike nights of snow and ice, and a crumbling mansion rife with hidden passageways and carrion birds. So if you have enjoyed Death in Her Hands by Tessa Moshweg and you're looking for something similar, then I would recommend this one. The next one I wanted to recommend was Woman Eating by Claire Coder. This is a novel about a woman called Lydia, who's just started an art course but the more interesting thing about her is that she is a vampire she has recently left her mum in a care home her mum is also a vampire and this is the first time she's ever stepped out into the world on her own and is being independent she is presenting as a young 20 something but she is obviously much older than that and this is about her trying not to eat people trying to work out who she is on her own terms this book also uses vampirism as a jumping off point to talk about race and having mixed heritage also talking about food and longing to eat or longing to want to eat food associated with your family's culture but not being able to because you are a vampire and you can only you know eat well, I was gonna say people, but blood more specifically. This book is very funny, but also very touching. And I thought it was brilliant. So that is another one I'd recommend. Next we have Cold Earth by Sarah Moss. I mean, I think the cover quite clearly represents why I would say this is a good time of year to be reading it. I'd also very much recommend her nonfiction book, Names for the Sea, Strangers in Iceland, which is about her time living in Iceland with her family. But this is a novel, it was her debut novel, I think, yes. And it is about a group of archeologists who are looking at a Viking settlement in Greenland and they become stranded and news kind of reaches them that there may be a pandemic happening in the world and they don't really know what that means for them and their journey back home. Um, if you are hesitant to read about pandemics, because I feel you on that front, this doesn't actually talk about that at all. It's just this whispering of something that might be happening somewhere else. This feels, I suppose, like an 
earlier slightly different version of her later novel Ghost Wall if you have read that and I found it intriguing to see the parallels between those two books yes if this one appeals I'd recommend then winter months I feel are amazing for reading classics and I'm not sure why I don't know if it's because classics feel cozy if it's to do with nostalgia possibly all of these things but I've um how many classics do I have on this list just two actually but this is one of them and this is one of if not my favorite children's book I don't know I always panic when people ask me what my favorite book ever was so let's not do that here but this is one of them this is When Hitler's Stopping Rabbit by Judith Carr and I always reread this in the winter time Judith Carr is the author of um the Mog series of picture books and the tiger who came to tea this is a series of novels she wrote three though this one is my favorite and i tend not to revisit the others quite as much i think it's because it's documenting when she was an adult and i much prefer reading about when she was a kid anyway this is a novelized version of her actual life so she fled germany with her family in the early 1930s because her father was a journalist outspoken against hitler and they were jewish too so they left germany and they moved to Switzerland first, then to France, and then to England. And this, as I said, is a novelized version of that. So things are slightly tweaked, I guess, to keep some distance and help her to be able to tell it in the way she wanted to tell. But there is just something about this book that I absolutely adore. I don't know how many times I've read it in my lifetime, but it is a lot. It's dozens and dozens and dozens. And every time I go to reread it, I think I really hope it holds up. And it has never ever fails me so that is one i'd recommend for this time of year i am sure that you will all have guessed that this one would be on this list this is northern lights by philip pullman which is the first in the his dark materials trilogy in the states this is published as the golden compass do i need to pitch this one to you i don't know if i do um i haven't enjoyed the prequel series so much the book of dust books so i think i'm just leaving that series now but this one definitely still stands up this is about a girl called lyra who was left at jordan college in her version of oxford which is not our version of oxford when she was a baby so she's grown up at the university she lives in a world where people's souls exist outside of their body in animal form her soul is called pantalemon and he is um, not called a soul but he's called a demon but that is what he is he is a soul and one day lyra is snooping because she's always snooping and she hears a talk that's being given at the college by her um, supposed uncle Lord Asriel who's talking about something that's happening in the far arctic north and he wants to go and investigate and he needs funding for that and she decides that she would really like to go on that adventure with him too. This is an epic adventure spanning three books the next one's called The Subtle Knives the third one is called The Amber Spyglass we travel between worlds we meet various different people there are witches and armoured bears and it is a a literal fight between science and organised religion I wrote my dissertation on it back in the day along with Narnia and Peter Pan so I have spent a lot of time with these books and I absolutely adore them i'm sure the majority of you have already read it and you're like jen you don't need to sell this to us but in case you haven't read it i very much recommend and i loved the bbc adaptation of his dark materials the last season came out last christmas i did not enjoy the film with nicole kidman and daniel craig unfortunately casting was great but not much else was great about that film but the bbc series was very true to the books brilliant acting fabulous all around so if you've been wary of watching that for fear of it being a bit rubbish you don't need to worry because it's great next on my list we have the therapist by niall giacomelli this is another pandemic book i don't know why there are two pandemic books in this pile i'm just checking there isn't another one actually there is another one <laughs> there is another one okay um anyway this one is a magical realist pandemic so this is about a world where people are starting to slowly turn invisible and our protagonist is trying to figure out what that means as his relationship with his wife breaks down this is a quote that i underlined when i read it i believe that a person is a house occupied by those they have met and loved 
that in order to live, a person must parcel themselves up and give parts of themselves away to be carried by others and to live elsewhere in other houses. I think the reason I'm recommending this as a winter book is because it is a bit of a ghost story and I think that ghost stories are perfect for winter time. I know that we associate ghost stories with Halloween and autumn, but if we think about the Victorians, they were very insistent that ghost stories were part of Christmas tradition. And if you would like to read something about that, you can read Christmas Days by Jeanette Winterson, which isn't on this pile here, but is another book that I would particularly recommend for this time of year. But yes, this one was one of my favorite reads the year that I read it, which was either last year or the year before, but it's very haunting and poetic. And it's not very big either. It's one of the Fairlight Moderns, which is a very beautiful series of um, tiny little books that you can put in your pocket. Next up, we have The Secret Lives of Church Ladies by Disha Filia. This is a collection of short stories which is currently being adapted into a TV show with Tessa Thompson. This is a collection about a group of women who are having a bit of an identity crisis or a crisis of faith, I suppose. They don't know each other. These are not interlinked except that they all are united by having faith in some form or other. And they're trying to reconcile things that they have been told in church or in their community to do with church and how they feel about different aspects of their lives and how sometimes those don't match up and it's giving them anxiety. So for instance, some of these stories are about queer women who have been told that that doesn't align with the faith that they have. A lot of these stories are about desire, are about betrayal, are about family. One of these stories, at least one of them, is set during a very snowy blizzard. <laughs> Obviously a blizzard is snowy and that's why I'm recommending it for this time of year. But I think there's also just something very, very cozy about this book. I think because you really get to the heart of these women and you really get to feel as though you've been invited into their homes, which is a massive privilege. And yeah, I adored this one too. You probably guess that this next one is on this list and that is The Book of Strange New Things by Michelle Faber. This is a novel about a man called Peter who's sent across the universe to preach the word of God to this alien life form. There's something about the whole setup that reminds me of Mary and her dealings with the Malefa in His Dark Materials. This does contain a pandemic, this is the other one, but again, it is very much at a distance. So Peter hears sometimes from his wife while he's in space and she's telling him that the world is falling apart and he feels very disconnected from all of it. Michelle actually wrote this book when his wife Eva was dying of cancer, which I didn't know the first time I read the book, but that definitely makes sense as an allegory, he's feeling very, very far away from his wife and she's going through this crisis and he can't reach her and he just feels as though he's on a complete other planet because in this book, he literally is. The reason I recommend it for winter time is because space is extremely cold <laughs> and it feels like he's living through a winter even though he's just in an entirely new place. I guess in many ways this combines the themes of both his dark materials and the secret lives of church ladies because it's about what it means to be human, traveling to other worlds, communicating with other species, but also working out what faith is to you, what does that mean, what can it bring to your life and yeah you know that this is one of my favorite books of all time. Speaking of uh, classics, as I was before, this is a modern classic. This is a book published by Persephone, and I always like to read one of their books in winter time. This is a book from the 80s. It's called Still Missing by Beth Gutchin. I read this between Christmas and New Year last year and completely was hooked, could not put it down, needed to know what happened. This is about a young boy who goes missing and his mum is trying to find him and we follow the police investigation and it is extremely, extremely tense. Um, because it's a mystery thriller, I don't really want to say too many more things about it other than you should read it because it's brilliant. I don't think this actually relates to winter at all, if I'm remembering correctly, but I read it in the winter, so I'm always going to associate this book with this time of year. And as I said, um, classics are always great for this time of year, plus crime and thrillers are too. And the next one I wanted to recommend, you may have guessed would be on this list too, that is Blue Monday by Nikki French, which is the first in the Frida Klein series. This begins in November and ends at Christmas. So it's a brilliant time to pick up the series if you haven't read it before. I would particularly recommend the audiobooks, which are narrated by Beth Chalmers. There are eight books in this series, but each 
book is a standalone mystery. You need to read them in order in order to get the character arcs over the top, but um, they are complete things in and of themselves. So this is about Frida Klein, who is a psychotherapist, and she becomes quite suspicious of one of her patients one day because he keeps saying that he longs for a child, isn't able to have one with his partner, and he describes very vividly what this child would look like. And then in the newspapers the next day, she sees that a child fitting that description has been abducted. She gets embroiled in the police investigation. And that's the case for all of the books in the series, which follow the days of the week. And then the last one is called Day of the Dead. We get to know Frida intimately throughout the course of the eight books and also all of her friends as well. I have so much love and affection for all of these characters. They are flawed, but brilliant. I mean, you know I love Nikki French. I have read all of their books. There are about 25, 26 books. And I did make a video talking about my favorites out of all of the ones they have written. If you missed that, I'll link that video in the description box down below. And then the final book on my top 10 before we get onto my TBR, we've got Winter by Ali Smith. I couldn't find my finished copy. This is a bound proof um, that I read finished copy must be somewhere. So this is one of her spring, not, no, not spring, seasonal quartets. This is the second in the series. It went autumn, winter, spring, summer, but you don't have to read them in order at all. Some characters come back in the summer book. Um, so it's quite helpful to have read autumn first, I suppose, if you're planning on reading all of them. But if you just want to pick up one, you are perfectly fine to pick up Winter on its own. This is about a man called Art who's traveling back to his mum's house for Christmas. And he recently broke up with his girlfriend, Charlotte, but he doesn't want to tell his family that. So he decides to hire a woman called Lux to pretend to be Charlotte to come home with him for Christmas so that he doesn't have to answer questions that he doesn't want to. He doesn't really want to face up to the way his life genuinely is. There are quite a few Dickens references in this, lots of riffs on Shakespeare. It's also a bit of a play on the nativity too. I did a deep dive video into all the imagery in this book years ago, whenever it came out, 2017. So I'll link that in the description box down below if you would like to go and take a look. Let's look at some books that are on my TBR. As I mentioned, I think that ghost stories and horror stories are great for this time of year as they are for Halloween, bleeding into the winter time. Bleeding being the appropriate term when we're talking about horror stories, I suppose. This is one I may get to. It's a very slight little thing. This is Death and Other Stories by Vidas Morkinis and it's translated from the Latvian by Katrina Garansvili. This is published by Strangers Press, who I've talked about before because I really love them. They are an independent publisher based in Norwich and they publish a series of chapters books or pamphlets and they have two Korean series, one Japanese series, one Dutch series, one from Switzerland and this is their most recent one which as I said is from Latvia. This is a collection of four short stories and the first one is called Death. I can't tell you more than that because there isn't actually a blurb in here but yeah this is the one from that collection that appeals to me the most and I may read it over the coming months. Also I think it's worth noting that as you can see these are published so beautifully and if you're looking for Christmas gifts for people still then I recommend their series of pamphlets because I think they make wonderful presents. Next up we have a book that I actually started reading a while ago and I put it down, I think, because I just had deadlines. It definitely wasn't because I wasn't enjoying it, because I was. I just haven't picked it back up again. But I think that now may be the time. This is Memoirs of a Polar Bear by Yoko Tawada, which is translated from the German by Susan Bernofsky. Yoko Tawada is Japanese, currently lives in Berlin, writes in both uh, German and in Japanese. And this is a story of three different bears. I'm not sure how wintry it is, but polar bear screams winter to me, and it does look like there is snow on the cover too. So that is why I added it to the pile. Next up is another Japanese book. This is Quicksand by Tanizaki, and this is translated from the Japanese by Howard Hibbert. The reason that I have put this on my winter TBR and I'm associating it with winter is probably 
quite tenuous and it's because it's reminding me of another book that is set in the winter and that book is Carol by Patricia Highsmith or A Price of Salt I think was the original title but now it's published as Carol but that is about two women who fall in love and embark on an affair and this is also about that. Carol is also a psychological thriller and the back of this says that this is a seductive psychological thriller about obsession, jealousy and betrayal, a riveting tale of malevolent corruption fatally masked by a terrible and deceptive beauty, fatal attraction in a 1920s Japanese setting. It's about a woman called Sonoko who is a cultured Osaka lady in an uninspiring marriage and when she decides to take an art class in town she meets the extraordinary Mitsuko a woman as beautiful and charismatic as she is cunning. I have no idea if this is set in the winter time, to be honest. The cover tells me no. This cover is very spring, May, but you know, maybe we'll see if I decide to pick it up over the next few months. This one I definitely will be picking up. This is Nettle Black by Nat Reeve. This is a queer Victorian, why did I say that word strangely? Victorian romp. And I bought it last year, and I think that the winter time would be a brilliant time to read it. I also think the winter time would be a brilliant time to read Sarah Waters. I didn't recommend her books in my, you know, top 10 favorites, but let me just throw that recommendation out to you. I started with Tipping the Velvet, which I adored. I'd also recommend Fingersmith and The Paying Guests. Anyway, this is a book I've been meaning to get to. However, the font is tiny, tiny, tiny. Um, and I have scratched corneas and I struggle to read tiny font. This doesn't have an audiobook. One of these days I will get an e-reader so I can enlarge font, but I don't have that yet. So I'm not sure if I actually can read this one or if it's gonna be too frustrating, but I'm definitely gonna give it a go and see what I think of it and whether or not I can just push through and read. We shall see. Then we have At the Edge of the Woods by Masatsuko Ono, which is translated from the Japanese by Juliet Winters Carpenter. I read a short version of this in one of the Strangest Press books in their Japanese series called At the Edge of the Wood, singular. This is the longer version of that, which is At the Edge of the Woods. And it is about a family in an unnamed foreign country. They're settling into a house at the edge of the woods, but something is off. A sound at first like coughing and then like laughter emanates from the nearby forest. It goes on to say fantastical creatures apparently live in the woods, in a castle where feudal lords reigned and resistance fighters fell. The mother who is pregnant and she's fearing another miscarriage because she's miscarried before, decides to go and stay with family closer to a hospital. And the dad and the son are left in this house on their own and weird things keep happening. Think of Room and Alam's Leave the World Behind meets Japanese folklore. That is the book math sandwich that I would put together for you to describe this book. This next one has been on many winter TBRs. You've probably seen me hold it up before. This is Brother in Ice by Alicia Kopf and it's translated from the Spanish by Mara Fay Lethem. This is a hybrid book. It says it is part research notes, past part fictionalized diary and part travel log, using the stories of polar exploration to make sense of the protagonist's own concerns as she comes of age as an artist, a daughter, and a sister to an autistic brother. I think the end bit of that blurb is why I have been more hesitant to pick this one up. I'm always a bit hesitant to read non-own voices perspectives on disability, only because I've been burned many times before in that respect, but maybe this book is brilliant. Maybe it is. So um, I should read it and find out. I've also just remembered I have another book about polar exploration that is on my TBR. I can't remember what it's called but I will insert the cover here. Maybe I will read that one this winter too. The final two books are books I would like to read together to see who did it best in adverted commas. So we have two books that are about Glass Town, which was the imaginary world that the Bronte siblings came up with. And I think these books came out around a similar time. So we've got a novel by Catherine M. Valenti, and this is The Glass Town Game. And then we have a graphic novel, which is just called Glass Town by Isabel Greenberg. And the color palette in this is so, so beautiful. Look at that. So these are covering very similar ground, but in different forms and in presumably very different ways. 
So I think it'll be fun to read them side by side. And I think something about imagination, exploration, maybe because it's the Brontes and I'm thinking classics, makes me think of winter time. So perhaps I will read these over the next few months too. I would love to know what books you associate with winter months. Any books that you like to revisit at this time of year or that you like to thrust into the hands of other people. Let me know if you're planning to read any of the books that I mentioned today. I will list them in the description box down below if you would like a refresher, a reminder of any of the titles. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new to my channel and you did and you would like to subscribe, that would be lovely. And if you enjoy my content and you would like to consider supporting me on Patreon, that would be lovely. Patreon is a place where you can tip creators and the support I receive over there allows me to keep creating free content for you all and funds my time making these videos accessible by creating captions and all of that good stuff. At the moment over on Patreon, I'm doing Vlogmas every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, that is on the $2 tier, so for $2 or £2 you unlock all of those videos for the month of December. Um, they are not the same as videos that I upload on this channel, many of them will be done in one take, they're much more casual, looking through my shelves and behind the scenes stuff, but if that appeals, that option is there for you as well. I will see you for another video next Sunday and I'm sending lots of love, bye.